how's it going big dream moms yo lady vitamin katie is here i'm so excited today i'm going to go over the pros and cons of bread we're going to be talking about is bread good for you or is it bad for you i know a lot of people who come up to me and they're like you know i don't really eat carbs or gluten is the devil <laughs> So today, I'm really excited to break through these myths and get to the bottom of this. It's a valid perspective that bread is great for us, and it's also a valid perspective that bread is not good for us. We're going to look at the evidence on either side and then decide which works best for you, which perspective works best for you. So there's three scenarios that I came up with as far as when people eat bread. The first scenario is on the day to day, having your toast, having your sandwiches. Secondly, when you are traveling, I know I ate so much pita bread when I was in Israel. Like when you're traveling, when you're out with friends, when you're having a special dinner, there's probably gonna be bread on the table right when you sit down, that kind of a thing. So a special occasion. And then there's the third scenario I came up with around bread where you are really, really stressed out. Maybe you just went through a breakup. Maybe you have not gotten enough sleep. Maybe you are, yeah, really depressed, really anxious, and you just need some hit of comfort. And you're like, I need some damn bread right now. Like I just am having carbohydrate cravings. It's intense. So in these three scenarios, like firstly, when it comes to having bread on the day to day, let's think about what kind of bread are we choosing? Because we cannot compare a wonder bread, a white bread that's highly, highly processed, that's designed to sit on the shelf for years versus a whole grain um, sprouted products. My personal favorites that you can buy at regular grocery stores are brands like Ezekiel, the food of life brand. The, love that brand as well as Dave's bread. I love Dave's and the texture is just amazing. So Dave's and Ezekiel, those are my personal favorites. I know Dr. Furman coins the term, the whiter the bread, the sooner you're dead. <laughs> okay. So go for a multi-grain or a whole wheat is going to be a good idea if you want to purchase bread on the day today. When it comes to going out to eat, why would it be a good idea to have bread? This is part of the experience. If I was was going to say that bread is a bad food and travel to Israel and you know pita bread yeah that's white bread however it is made fresh you can't even compare pita at the store versus the fresh pita that I was having in Israel if you are traveling if you are at a restaurant if you're in for the experience I believe that this is a great time and a great opportunity to experience some bread now that is my perspective and we'll go over why this might be a bad idea for you in the next part of this however in this scenario this is kind of the great area when it comes to having bread and having you feel really good about it and having it be healthy for you is it healthy for you to get to experience that bread in the moment and get to um, break bread with friends and get to celebrate and get to really try something new this can be a part of your life that's really important to you to really get to try different varieties of bread and different cuisine if your goals are around managing your blood sugars and you're eating so much bread all the time and you're not even hungry but there's bread on the table obviously we don't want to eat that right like that's going to be too much bread so you get to decide in this gray area of traveling if this is empowering for you, right? And then lastly, in this situation where, oh my God, like I'm so stressed out, I feel depressed, I feel anxious, I need some comfort. Now, is this bread a lesser evil than something like alcohol and drugs? I think that to some capacity, we want to allow ourselves to emotionally eat. It does become a problem though, if this is a chronic situation, we're gonna to wanna to reach out to a therapist, reach out for some help if we're consistently using food to cope with our emotions. However, if it's a um, acute, like random, if it's a, um, something really, a situation that's going on where you really need some comfort quick in the moment, yes, simple carbohydrates like refined sugar bread like white bread and rolls and things like that can definitely change our blood chemistry pretty quickly right the second we start eating this food our blood sugar is going to go up and we're our serotonin our feel good hormones are going to start going off so having carbohydrate rich foods especially really sweet foods can definitely alter our our state i invite you to question 
do I have the willingness to sit with this emotion? What could I possibly do to turn up the willingness knob to feeling a little bit uncomfortable? And let's practice having some separation between the feeling that we're feeling and the reaction that we're having. So if we're aware enough, if there's just like a millimeter of space to see what's going on, if you have a little bit of awareness, then we can have the capacity to practice self-care versus self-destruction in times of stress and in times of depression, anxiety, that kind of a thing. So, and I, I know the scenario also as far as um, if you are a college student and you're out drinking and you just want to get the 10 cent day old bread from Jimmy John's, <laughs> um, that is a situation where also um, I invite you to think about, okay, do I really want this bread? Do I really need this bread? Or maybe is water a better option for me at this time? Okay, so thinking about um, having the separation between what is going on with our, in our lives, like whether it be anxiety, whether it be um, we are out to eat, we're traveling, we are drunk at a party as a college student, whatever it is going on with our lives and having that separation of awareness of how we want to react and how we want to feel and being able to look at what's going on in our lives. So that's a practice that I hold my clients accountable for in the time working with me. And we get to decide whether or not that bread is empowering and exciting and healthy and good for us in that moment, just based on our, um, our motivation and our inspiration for how we want to take care of ourselves. Do we need to experience more freedom in our lives? Are we excited about um, being less restrictive and less like rigid in our lives because we've just been like focusing on clean eating way too much that we haven't eaten bread in years? Or are we focusing on pulling it back, drawing in the reins and um, making sure that we are choosing foods that are more in alignment with a, a healthier vessel? Number one reason why bread is good for us is when we have a healthy gut. Our gut needs prebiotics, aka fiber, to feed our probiotics, to feed our good gut bacteria. This is so essential for our immunity, for anti-inflammatory responses, for our mood. Did you know that 90% of our serotonin, our feel-good neurotransmitter, gets produced in our gut? So long as we have that good gut bacteria that's being fed constantly by fiber from things like whole grains, okay? And if our gut isn't working, then obviously we're not going to be able to process that fiber correctly. So when bread is good for us is when our gut is functioning optimally and we want to keep our gut functioning optimally, all right? Number two reason that bread might be good for us is when this bread is whole grain. So a whole grain, what does that mean? That means that the grain has intact its bran, its germ, and its endosperm. So the bran on the outside, it's got lots of vitamins and minerals, including vitamin E and iron, and then the endosperm and the germ, this is gonna provide a little bit more protein and just more fiber as well. So when it's whole grain, this is so much better than the white bread, the white wonder bread that you might see in the store. And this, what this really is, is it's a seed of a grass. And the more wholesome this is, the more complex the carbohydrate is and the more longer lasting and sustained energy we're going to have. So we're gonna have less of a blood sugar spike and a crash and more of a consistent, chill, stable energy throughout the day when it's a whole grain. As long as this bread is whole grain, it's going to be a healthier option. The third way that bread is going to be healthy for us is when the grain is soaked and sprouted. So like I said previously, the Ezekiel brand, they have the messaging that it is soaked and sprouted. It's a sprouted grain. Did you know that sprouting actually helps to remove anti-nutrients like phytic acid? Phytic acid can actually prevent absorption of minerals like zinc and iron. However, when we soak and we sprout our grains, that reduces the phytic acid and makes it so that we can more easily and readily absorb zinc and iron. This also comes into play with other anti-nutrients, things like lectins and tannins can also be removed. And if you think about the logic behind this, for example, if you think about the seed of an apple, if you just swallow the seed of an apple whole, then obviously you're going to see the seed come out in your number two, and that's brilliant for nature to make this like this, so that the um, 
the seed can germinate in the soil. However, if this seed was ground or was soaked and sprouted, when it's soaked and sprouted, then it starts to grow a little bit and the anti-nutrients that are meant to keep it um, from digesting in our stomach, those anti-nutrients are there for a good reason. The anti-nutrients are there because these whole grains are a seed of a grass. So the seed of a grass wants to um, not be digested until it's watered, until it's in the dirt and it's given some water so that the nutrients can come out to support this grass that's going to grow, whether it be wheat grass or um, barley grass, oat grass, rye, whatever, these are all seeds of a grass and the anti-nutrients are there so that it makes it through our digestive system. However, when it starts to germinate and it starts to sprout outside of our digestive system, then those nutrients become readily available, right? So those are gonna make it a lot easier for us to digest and make those nutrients obviously more able to be utilized, okay? So, and that comes into play too when we're cooking rice, when we're cooking quinoa, when we're cooking buckwheat, different kinds of grains. It's a good idea to soak and sprout beforehand. The fourth way that bread and whole grains might be healthier for us is if we choose an ancient grain variety when we purchase our bread. So I really highly recommend that we check out Dr. Michael Greger's nutritionfacts.org. He has a great video going over are ancient grains healthier? And the varieties of wheat have been shown to play a role in our inflammatory response. So if we're choosing just a regular um, wheat bread versus a kamut or einkorn wheat, the kamut and einkorn, these ancient grains, do have more antioxidants and more beneficial properties that have shown to provide less of an inflammatory response on people. So there is more research needed to support this claim. However, it does make sense to me to choose whole grain options also, just from my perspective, thinking about how things are genetically modified these days and how um, the wheat in America might be mass produced and the products are not necessarily as fresh as say if you were to go get pita bread fresh in Israel where these crops are not as monoculture and they may still use the ancient varieties, it might be digested better. So just something to consider and something to get nerdy about. But research is still needed as far as the ancient grains being more um, beneficial for us. However, I think it's safe to say that choosing a whole grain option and a less processed option is going to be the healthier option. Fifth reason why bread might be good for us is if it is sourdough. Sourdough is really cool because it's been fermented a little bit more than other varieties of bread and this can make it easier on our gut to process and digest. Sixth reason why bread might be good for us is if we're not allergic to it, sensitive to it, or have a gluten intolerance like celiac disease. Also, there's people out there who are allergic to wheat or allergic to certain grains and these kinds of things. If we don't get bloated from having bread, if we don't feel sick, if we don't, um, yeah, have a crazy and a phylactic response from eating whole grains and from eating bread, then it will be good for us. I think this can be pretty obvious. However, a lot of people will think that if some people have an allergy to wheat, then everybody has an allergy to wheat. And that's not necessarily the case. There's actually a lot of research showing us that whole grains and bread are really good for us. It's eating just three portions of whole grains a day. The observed decrease in systolic blood pressure could decrease the incidence of coronary artery disease and stroke by 15% and 25% respectively. Just a single serving a day of oats and barley may lower our cholesterol. Okay, so just putting that out there, if you are sensitive to it or allergic to it, then it's not good for you. And if you're not sensitive or allergic to it, then it's a great option for you. And that brings me to reason number seven why bread is amazing, and that is because it is delicious and it is convenient. I love being able to just make a sandwich and have that delicious thing or putting some avocado toast instead of getting my whole grains from having to boil a pot, that kind of a thing. It's If you like it, if it's delicious for you, if it makes you smile, if it makes you happy, if you're getting excitement from this life, from this bread, it is great for you. It's a great option, all right? 
the eighth time when bread is really good for us is when we are having a healthy balanced diet and we're having fruits vegetables beans healthy sources of fat when we are hydrated having bread is a great option <laughs> obviously if all we're eating is bread on bread on bread on bread on bread and more bread then having more bread is probably not the healthiest thing but if we're eating a healthy balanced diet bread is something wonderful to get to include number nine when you put healthy things on it and when there's healthy things in it so if your bread is not super full of preservatives and it's whole grain and you're putting some hummus some lettuce some tomato some barbecue tempeh in there you're making yourself a fat delicious sandwich maybe a uh, tofu scramble avocado situation it's gonna be really really healthy and really delicious lastly number 10 when bread is really good for us is when we're grateful and so excited to eat it if we go into eating anything from a space of fear and guilt and shame this actually causes a stress response in the body. When our stress response nervous system is activated, we're not able to digest our food properly. So our heart rate is gonna go up, our blood pressure is gonna go up, and our blood sugar is going to go up when we have these feelings of stress, shame, guilt, fear around eating. And what this is going to do is it's going to lead to more things like heart disease and diabetes because the food that we're eating, instead of being digested properly, because this response in primitive times is utilized for us to run away from a tiger. Like our body is getting ready to run, but instead we're getting all this anxiety from eating a piece of bread. So <laughs> this is really going to make our blood sugar go up and lead to things like weight gain and diabetes. What we really want to do is activate our parasympathetic nervous system, our rest and digest nervous system. And this nervous system is activated when we are having thoughts of gratitude, when we're feeling calm, when we're feeling at peace, and when we're feeling, yeah, just mindfully eating. This is going to allow our food to be digested and absorbed properly so that instead of it causing a significant blood sugar spike and causing weight gain, it's really going to have really wonderful digestion. I don't know if you've ever experienced being stressed and having indigestion. That makes so much sense. Of course, our gut is our second brain and the parasympathetic rest and digest nervous system probably wasn't activated. So you probably weren't able to digest your food properly. So the 10th and most important reason why bread is going to be good for us is when we are really ah, taking a deep breath and expressing so much gratitude for getting to eat this bread. I hope you learned a lot from this video. I hope you feel a lot more free and excited around eating bread or not eating bread and making it something that is an empowering decision for you. Please do comment below. Are you going to eat bread after this video? Tell me why or why not, and I would love to answer whatever you questions you have around this. Again, my name is Katie Rines. I love helping people navigate lots of food and body image issues. Hit me up on Instagram at vitamin.katie. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, go ahead, hit that big red subscribe button and get excited for more videos to come. You are freaking amazing. I love you so much. Take a deep breath. <sighs> feel so grateful and alive today. I am so excited for you to feel empowered around bread. All right. Can't wait to read your comments below. Have a great day. Bye.